Hello pilots, welcome back to Motion RC. I'm James and today we're gonna to be showing you how to set up, how to wire up your new Flightline OB-10A. We've gotten a lot of service calls from people getting their OB-10s who are just a little confused. Again, as I said in the build video, the manual didn't really cover it and I guess I didn't cover it so well. So I'm back here to show you just exactly what needs to plug in to the blue box, what's already plugged into the blue box uh, when you get your plane and um, all the wiring that comes out of the center wing. And again, how to get that all together before you start assembling because it is really the first step you're going to have to do um, to get your OV-10 ready to go. All right, guys, first things first, let's just talk quickly about the blue box and exactly what's on it and what's going to be, um, you know, there are basically four main categories to the blue box. Let's talk about those. So as you can see, taking a look at the front, I, I break it down to four. You have two pronged uh, holes for server leads. These are all your light ports. So they are going to control um, the type of light you want to plug in. So you have a triple flash port, a uh, double flash, takeoff light port, two strobe ports, and then two light ports, which just mean if you plug a light into that, the light will always be on. So this top corner section is just for your lights. Going below, these, these ports, you'll see receiver. Everything coming out of here is what's gonna go into your receiver. Because remember, a multifunction control board, the idea behind it is you can plug a lot of things in and, you know, and sort of like a Y lead, bring it out in one shot. So you can get, you know, that's the whole basis behind it. So anything plugged into here is what you will be putting into your receiver. And there's aileron, elevator, rudder, gear, flap, and an aux one, which could be a throttle channel if you want. But basically those six ports you can see on the side here, side view, um, those all go to your receiver. Then the third section is your two big ribbon cables. So as it pertains to the OV-10A, you're plugging in, when you plug in the ribbon, they are gonna, both ribbons are gonna be for both outer wing sections. So everything having to do with the outer wings, since you can take the outer wing off for transportation, is going to be included in the ribbon cable. So that's a nav light on each side, uh, your, one of your outboard flaps on each side, and one aileron on each side is going to be controlled through the ribbon box. Then the far right side, that's going to be basically everything else. So you can plug in control services. If your plane had gear doors, um, nose gear, nose steering, things like that are all on the side. So you can see going down the line here, we have double stage door with two ports, single stage door, this is your throttle channel or your auxiliary one, so you could do anything in those. Nose steering, then three gear ports. So if you had a nose gear and two mains, that's what you plug in there. Two rudders and two elevators. So that's inherently your entire blue box. Now, let's get to how it pertains to the OV-10. So first things first, when you pull out the center fuselage section of your OV-10, your blue box is going to be on the, included on the battery tray, and it is going to be, you know, it's already going to be inside. Now I tell you, first things first, unscrew the four screws that are for your battery tray, and pull it out and just take a look. This is how you should see uh, everything plugged in, and we'll explain it uh, coming out now. So first things first, as I had said about the light ports, you have your two, these are the two two prong servo leads, just a red and black wire have to do with LEDs. So the first one is your bottom strobe, that's on the OV-10, that's plugged into the triple flash port. And then you have your nose light on the OV-10, that's plugged into the takeoff light. The takeoff light on the MCBE, that's what allows the light to turn on and off, off with the nose gear. So when your gear is retracted, your light is off, or your light is on, and then when your gear goes up, your light turns off. That's all that's plugged in there. Then now we'll jump to this side. The only two servos that should, the only two leads that should be plugged in on this side are for your nose steering. That's for the servo up here that's steering your nose and your nose gear itself, the actual retract that goes up and down. And you can see they're plugged in together. Now going around to the other side, quick, you're gonna have four leads coming out of the receiver port. So this is what these four are going to go to your receiver. You will see aileron, rudder, landing gear, and flap. There is not an elevator lead coming out of the blue box. So that's something you could take note of. The elevator lead that comes through the fuse, eventually, that's in the center wing right now, that's gonna go direct to your receiver. 
So they're telling you, so this should tell you right off the bat, these are what are going to go to direct to your receiver, but we'll get to that because one of them actually will not either. It's going to be the flap, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. So now let's go over to your center wing section. So now I have an exploded view here. This is everything coming out of your center wing as you will get it. And it looks like a mess and that's why we like the blue box because it's going to be able to hide all these wires in the back of the fuselage. But first things first, you have your two ribbon cables. Again, they're going to control everything that plugs into the outer wing section and those are the easiest to plug into the blue box. Uh, when you're ready, they just plug in here, like so. Now what else do we not need that having to do with the blue box? You're going to have two of your XT60. These are coming off of both ESCs into the motors. So that's where you plug in your batteries. And one of them has your UBEC off of it. Now, this UBEC has a lead coming off of it. Now, for some reason, I guess people at the factory are getting, uh, people getting these say that they have a throttle um, sticker on it. This is not your throttle. I don't know why they did that. The lead coming off the UBEC, this is what's gonna give your receiver power. So this is the lead that could plug into any open port on your receiver. So when you're, so this is the last thing you, you uh, plug in before you plug in your batteries um, to bind up or anything like that. That's just your UBEC power, you know, so keep take note of that. Not needed for the blue box. Now we come over to all the servo leads that come out. What you should see, first things first, your throttle. These are already wide together. This is a big Y lead. This can go directly into your throttle port. This is coming from both motors, uh, both ESCs attached to both motors. Then you're going to have your one elevator, elevator lead. Now, if you wanted to, you could add another plug into your elevator on the, on the blue box, go direct to your receiver here, and plug this into an, the elevator port on the blue box, but you don't need to. You can go direct to your receiver with that. There's more than enough length for where we recommend you store your receiver, which is in the back of that main fuselage. So that can go direct to receiver. Now you will see you have two rudder ports, two rudder leads, that's for both rudder servos on the twin boom aircraft. Those will get plugged in to the blue box. And again, mind your polarity on the blue box. You see it at the bottom. Positive on one side, po all positives go to the right if you're looking at your blue box this way. So positive to the right. So you'd put your rudders in the two rudder ports, here and here. And again, we'll take these out and we'll do it in the real aircraft in a second, but I just wanna show you. So rudder, then you have two landing gears. So this is for both main gears coming out of each boom. So you will have two open ports left on the gear because your nose gear is already plugged in as we showed you and your nose steering's already plugged in. So you'll plug in a landing gear here and you'll plug in a landing gear here. So again, throttle, elevator, not plugged in. Now the last, there's three more leads left. Hold on, you gotta show me. Oh, which ones? I'm the sorry. The ones you just did, there you go. I think here we go. Locking. All right. So now you have you should have three leads left in the explanation. One is another light. This is for the strobe on the top of the elevator. So on the blue box, it's up to you. If you don't want this light to strobe, you could plug it into the light port. If you want it to strobe, you could plug it into the strobe light or you'd have the double flash open. I had just plugged it into the strobe light on mine. And now finally, you have your two flap leads, okay? Now this is where people um, are getting the most confused, and I get it. Remember, this OV-10 has four servo leads, two inboard flaps, which are here. These are what you're holding, your inboard flap leads for your center wing. Your outboard flaps are attached to the ribbon cables, okay? They're a part of the outer wing. That's why for transportation, you could take the outer wing and off on and off because you just have your ribbon cables. So you're gonna take the included Y lead, it's a tri lead if you will, and you're gonna take two of the open ports on it and you're gonna plug in your flaps here. Let's make sure our polarity's correct. Boom. 
So now your two flap leads are connected to your Y, okay? So that explains everything coming out of your MCB, uh, of your center wing and going into the blue box. So the only thing coming out of the center wings, the only things that go into the blue box are your two rudder leads, your two landing gears, and your strobe light from the horizontal stabilizer. Okay, now I'm gonna plug this from here and now we're gonna show it on the already done uh, blue box on the OV-10. All right, so now back to the center fuselage here. You see everything that's already plugged in to the uh, blue box. Now, this is the reason we take the screws off the battery tray because you gotta, you gotta get everything plugged in through this hole on the top of the center wing, on the top of the fuselage from the center wing. So you, by taking off your screws, this allows you to bring the blue box up as high as you can so that now you have access to get, to get everything plugged in that you're gonna need plugged in. So, as we said from here, as we said before, first things first, let's get the four leads that we know, the five leads that we know that go direct to your blue box plugged in first. And that is your two landing gear leads and your two, and your two rudder leads. And then we need that light. So this is our strobe from our horizontal. Two rudders, two landing gear. You already had the nose gear, already had the nose steering, and you should see three lights plugged in. Yeah. Now, the last two things that go into the blue box are your ribbon cables. So get your ribbon cables plugged in. Because again, once you plug all these in, you're never gonna have to unplug them again. Because everything, you know, unless you really wanted to take the whole thing apart. Okay. Now, again, everything that needs to be plugged into the blue box is now plugged in. So, summarize. So what you should have left, what you should have left after you've plugged in everything into the blue box, again, are your two flap leads with one extra port, your two powers, your elevator, and your wide, already wide throttle lead that comes like that. So now get those into the hole on the front. Okay, so now I assembled, now that I ran, routed everything through, it's easier to get it plugged back in, so I, I screwed it together, uh, our main fuse, and now we can see everything out here, because the next step now is how do you get it all wired up to your transmitter? Um, I've flown it on a six channel Stability Plus gyro, more than enough channels, it has seven channels, which is uh, what you're gonna need for, for the OV-10. And let's get, let's show you what goes in. So first things first, your throttle, we had spoke about already, it's already wide together. So get your throttle plugged in to your receiver. Boom, one. <clears throat> now your aileron, that's gonna come out of the blue box. So remember we had four leads coming out of the blue box. So grab the one that says aileron, get that plugged in. That's two. Then you're gonna have your elevator. See, you got more than enough elevator lead that it didn't need to go through the blue box. So this one was coming directly out of the center wing, which is routed all the way through to your, to your elevator in the back. Get your elevator plugged in. Now your rudder. This one is coming out of the blue box. Because remember, we plugged two rudder, or two rudder servos were plugged into the blue box, which we just did. So your rudder goes in. Then next you have your landing gear. Again, you, they, they supply you a wire coming out of your blue box. So you're gonna plug the landing gear in because we plugged in each main gear was plugged into the blue box and the nose gear and the nose steering was also plugged into the blue box. And this lead coming out is what's gonna control all of that into your receiver. So now at this stage, you should have two open uh, leads left. One is gonna be Remember that flap channel. So they give you the flap port coming out of the blue box. Remember, this flap port, the blue box, we've now, the, the ribbon cables have the outer wing flaps attached to them. So this flap cable, if you just plug this directly into your receiver, you would only get outboard flaps because your two flap leads aren't plugged into the blue box. Your inboard flaps, they were plugged into this tri-lead. So you need to take your flap, 
lead from the blue box, put it into the last open slot on your tri lead, and then the solo flap lead from the tri lead is going to go into your flap channel. And then last things last, depending on the receiver you have, then you have your U-back. This is what's going to give you power. If you try to plug in right now, you will not get any power to the receiver. This is what's going to give you the power. So you get that plugged in. And you're good. But now, if you're using the Admiral Stability Plus 6-channel gyro, uh, what you're going to have to do to get it bound up, unplug the flaps, because right now the u plugged into the bind port, Take out the UBEC, put it in the flap channel, so that'll give you power, and then take your bind plug, stick it in the, in the bind port section, like this, and then you get yourself bound up. So let's do that now. Okay, now we're gonna follow regular binding procedure. So I got two Admiral 4000 packs, and I'm just gonna leave those outside. And I'm gonna plug one, I'm gonna plug the one without the UBEC in first. Then I'm going to plug the one with the U back in. And you see, that's what, give me that's what gives me power to the receiver. And then your regular bind procedure, push in the bind button, hold it back. Binding. DSNX 22 milliseconds. Boom. So now, remember, our flaps aren't plugged in. So what I'm going to do before I do anything, is I'm going to pull my bind plug, I'm going to pull my power, and now I'm going to take the U-back out of the flat position, put it back into the bind port, and again, you'll only have to do this if you're trying to use our 6-channel stability plus, or 6-channel regular. Put the flaps back in, I'm going to leave that right out of the aircraft for now see it and now let's get it plugged back in and like I said I prefer to plug in the one without the UBEC first and now we're bound up we got aileron elevator rudder nose steering Coming from the blue box, our lights are all working properly. Now check the flaps, if you can see all four. Ready, three, two, all four flaps. That's what the Wise wide lead does. And we can check our gear quick. And again, it's on a bit of a delay, as the blue box says. There they are right down and then am I out of the way of the motors there you go and your motors work so guys there you have it that is how to wire up your OV10 obviously at this point um, you would have wired up and then you're gonna be building the rest of the aircraft and putting it together but we just want to show you how to do the wiring setup because a lot of people seem to have uh, issues with that it is a bit tedious but the you know but it works you know so we're just we apologize for not having that in the manual as uh, as it was but we're in the process of updating that manual and we got this video out as soon as possible hopefully to help you guys on your way so that'll do it for us here at Motion RC. Guys, any questions, leave them in the comments of this video. Head over to Hobby Squawk. We're answering all the questions we can there. And uh, always reach out to your customer service team with any product we have with any questions because those guys are top notch and they know how best to help you. So that'll do it for us here in the studio, guys. Enjoy your Flightline OV-10s and we'll see you next time at Motion RC.